What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Big Rig Racing YouTube channel. Today we're going to be putting something in our car that I consider probably something very important in terms of being able to tune this car the way we actually want to do it and that is putting an adjustable fuel pressure regulator inside this engine bay. Now when it comes to or came to choosing a fuel pressure regulator I had a look around at what or some different options of what I could put in the car and ultimately I settled on um, a beautiful little piece of kit from Turbo Smart. Um, this is actually the uh, one of their new sleeper series fuel pressure regulators. Uh, it's pretty much all black, um, will look great in our engine bay. Uh, they do have other colours, um, nothing against the other colours, I just thought black would look good. Um, I got all this from uh, Performance Parts Plus here in Townsville. Um, they, uh, they sorted it all out. Um, we even got a fuel pressure ready or fuel pressure gauge, all black, um, except for the, obviously the numbers and stuff on there. So that'll look great in there as well. We have thread tape. We have a whole bunch of Aeroflow fuel fittings and a fuel rail adapter that we'll be using to put that in the car. Uh, some vac line needed to get back into the uh, regulator. And we have some, we've got the uh, 500 series fuel and oil hose from Aeroflow. Uh, this is really, really tough to get, a uh, bit of kit. We'll be adding on to all this. So when we put it all in the car, uh, it'll all make it nice and easy and we can tune our car because in this series we can't actually access or do anything to the uh, stock ECU to tune the car. Everything has to be done um, or have to leave the engine harness and the ECU stock. So the only way we can really tune this car is through a fuel pressure regulator. So we'll get into the car and uh, see how it looks. Alright, so when I got this uh, Turbo Smart fuel pressure regulator. Um, this is the box it comes in. You obviously get a really sweet looking Turbo Smart sticker. Um, you get your bracket that we use to attach it to the car. And if we pull this out, this tiny little thing is our fuel pressure regulator. Now, it may look small, but this thing can actually hold up to 800 horsepower. Um, a fuel flow, fuel flow through this regulator. So we'll stick this in the car, find the best place to put it and hook it all up and uh, see if we can uh, get this car running much nicer because this car, this XL actually from factory, um, they make it run a bit fat, a bit, bit rich. So we can lean it out, get a bit more power or add fuel if we need to. Um, we can put it on a dyno and adjust the fuel pressure and get a bit more power out of this whole girl. So, we know where we're going to put our fuel pressure regulator now. We've got the rivet nuts in there, ready to go. We're just going to start putting all our connections in, all our ports. I've got thread tape on all of them and one little, um, little one there to block off the extra port we don't need. Knowing on these ones, we've got, I don't know if you can see it because it's dark, we've got two holes there that hold on the bracket. This front one will be going to our gauge. This one right here, we'll be having one of these 1 8 NPT connections go into it. That'll go to the fuel rail. And we've got one for the bottom, that's our return line. Back to our fuel tank. So we'll stick that one in. The final one we have to put in, knowing that that's our gauge port, we have to block this one off at the back, so we've got this little plug here, so we'll stick that in. There we go. 
we we'll just have to put our gauge on the front and connect it all back up. Then we'll um, get that in the car. So the gauge I'm going to be using is a uh, MVP liquid filled. Um, it's actually a shock proof uh, fuel, fuel pressure gauge. The reason why I went for this one is because if you look at the numbers around the side, they go increments of uh, two. Okay, some will go increments of say five or different ones. For me to get specific readings, I want to have increments of two right around there. So this one's perfect. I've earned about 30 bucks, 40 bucks or so. Um, yeah, liquid filled, shock proof. We'll stick that in, goes up to a PSI of 100, which is more than enough on what we need. And we'll um, get it in and uh, onto our regulator so it should sit in. Just there, back there. Perfect. Done. Now we'll put the bracket back on and get it in the car. So if you look at this bracket, it usually is straight, but I've had to actually bend it slightly to match the uh, the upright towel or the inside of the car. So now we can bolt that on. We're going to use some spring washers and some six uh, some M6 bolts, and uh, it'll sit in the car. So we'll do that now, and then we'll get it all hooked up. start disconnecting the rest of the fuel system and start hooking the new stuff up. Which would be fun. Let's get to it. And this is where the fun really began for this little project on this car. There's two screws holding on the stock fuel pressure regulator to the fuel rail. One of them came out really easily and the other did not budge at all. And we tried everything. I tried screwdrivers, I tried WD-40. Um, the screwdrivers chewed up the screw. We tried screw extractors and it came to the point where I just had to bust out the Dremel and get the top of the screw off. And when we got part of it off, it actually started to spin and we were able to get the rest of the screw out and remove the stock fuel pressure regulator from the fuel rail. Why does everything have to be 10 times harder with this car? I'll tell you what. Whew. Must be time for a Pepsi Max. All right, as you can see, we've got our fuel pressure regulator mounted up here. It's nice and sturdy. We've got our adapter for the fuel rail coming off there. We just had to hollow, uh, wallow out some of the holes just to um, Make the adapter fit, just used a Dremel. Um, made a bit of a mess of it, but that's all right. Um, got our, our adapter in there. Now it's just time to run some uh, run some fuel hose, which I hopefully this thing's gonna be flexible enough to get from there down there, we'll find out.
Put our fuel on there. Hopefully it'll be fine, it should be alright. Um, now to run, we'll run a back line first, straight off here onto here. And then we'll run our return from the bottom all the way down to our return on the fuel tank. Alright, we've got all that plumbed now. Got our vacuum line on. I haven't put a zip tie on the top one just yet. We'll do that after we set the pressure. Uh, pressure gauge, regulator. Got our adapter down here for the fuel rail. Got our hose coming from the fuel rail to our regulator. Then our hose back underneath, back to the fuel tank. So, we should be good now to uh, get the car started. I think I might just need to charge the battery a little bit before we do that. So, while I charge the battery, we'll clean up and kick it over and see if we can set a, a fuel pressure. So while the car charges, we'll just have a quick chat about why exactly we need one of these in the car. If we have a look at our stock fuel pressure regulator that ran underneath a fuel rail like that, we couldn't adjust it. That was essentially set at a certain PSI or a certain setting. With this new one, we can tune it to add more fuel to run through the injectors or across the injectors or pull more fuel out and send more back to the fuel tank. How does that help us? Well, this is a one-to-one -one rising fuel pressure regulator. So for every one PSI of vacuum pressure that comes out of our manifold or our plenum, it increases the fuel flow through the injector by one PSI. So effectively, if we have five PSI coming out of here, and this is set at 30, okay, once we hook up our vacuum line, this will pull up, or when we hit the gas, it'll pull up to 35, in theory. So we can tune the car and tune the amount of fuel and stuff we got going through the injectors because we can't touch the ECU at all. So, we'll give this fire it up. We'll see where it's at. I'll just loosen this off now. Like so. And then we can uh, increase or decrease where we need to be. Now factory pressure is about 47 PSI. So all you do is once we come over here, Pull the vacuum line off, block it with your thumb, or block it so, and then we can then uh, increase or decrease where we need to need to be to get it to um, that specific pressure. Then when you put the vacuum line back on, it'll actually drop um, drop down a little, and then we can fire it back up. And then when we hit the gas, if we're out on the road, with the pressure that goes through it, it'll pull it back up to be at the right pressure we need to be when we're driving on the road. So fire it up, we'll see how we go. Two PSI with the vacuum line on. Right now we're at almost 40 dead on, so we'll raise up to 47. See if you saw down there, you can see down there it's actually dropped down to 37 psi. All right, so it should be good to go. We might make a few more adjustments later on. That's good to go for the moment. And there we go, it's our fuel pressure regulator in the car. It's uh it's a small expense, but it makes a huge difference and it's super easy to install in the car. Um, it, I mean, if I wasn't filming and I wasn't doing all the other stuff, I could probably do it in at least 45 minutes. If that, it's not an all day job. It's quick, it's easy. Um, and even setting the, the, uh, the vacuum pressure, super simple. Um, we don't have any leaks, which is lovely. So. That's another job ticked off the list, and we are very, very, very close to getting this car out on track. 
and giving it a burn. So, uh, we still have a few other things. We're going to do a wheel warmer on this car. I'm going to make up my own string line kit for that and um, get all that taken care of. And then we can get it out on track and see how it goes. And I'm very excited for that. So, uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Uh, hopefully, I have another video coming out very shortly because I'm on school holidays now. And we'll, um, we'll give this thing a bit of a burn. But very happy. Love this fuel pressure regulator from Turbo Smart. Um, it's the FPR Compact. Uh, it handles up to 800 horsepower. Obviously, this car won't be making that. Um, they do have other versions available for higher horsepower applications. But we, uh, we got this one because it's pretty much all we need. And um, yeah, I'll link everything that came for this to make this and get it into the car. I'll link it down below in the description. Um, give, video, give the video a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed guys, and um, hit that notification bell um, so you can keep up to date when I release new videos. So hopefully we'll have some new videos coming out very, very soon. So until next time, have a great time guys. Uh, if you're building a car, enjoy it. It can be frustrating at times, but it's well worth it in the end. So I'll see you next time. I'm in the big leagues, Tony don't miss me, ballin' like Houston.